In this video, we're going to take a look at two examples of related rates where we're modeling with triangles. Let's look at this first question together. Again, we're going to use the same strategy that we did before. Now, I already have a triangle up here. It might not be immediately obvious that we would use a triangle, but essentially we have an airplane. And yes, I am the best artist ever. You're welcome. So I have an airplane flying at an altitude of six miles towards a radar station. So airplane, radar station. Now, why would I use a triangle? Well, because I know a lot of things about right triangles, and so I'm going to model it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and label this side as A, this side as B, and this side of C. And for each of these sides, I should have a static value and a variable value. So I should have a DA over DT. I should have a DB over DT. And I should have a DC over DT. And then I should have a value for each of those letters I've written in blue. So let's read the question. An airplane is flying at an altitude of six miles. So that's A. A is six miles. That's the altitude on a path that will take it directly over the radar tracking station. So we're thinking about the plane going this way. It's going to end up directly over the tracking station. If the distance from the station to um, is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour. So obviously decreasing at 400 miles per hour is a rate. So the question is, are we talking about B? Are we talking about C? Well, we're talking about the distance from the station. So that's this is how we would measure the distance. So unless it said ground distance, we have to assume it's C, which means this is decreasing at a rate of 400 miles per hour. When the distance is 10 miles, so at the moment in time when this distance is 10 miles, what is the speed of the plane? So what am I trying to find? The speed of the plane, which is the change in rate of B. So from here, I need to fill in anything that doesn't have two values. So I already have a question mark for dB over dt. What is dA over dt? Well, they don't tell me that the altitude is changing at all. So that change is zero. I'm not changing the altitude. So the only thing I'm missing is a value for b. But again, thankfully, I know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So 6 squared plus b squared is equal to 10 squared. 36 plus b squared is equal to 100. b squared is equal to 64, and b therefore must be eight miles. So this is eight miles. Now I have everything I need to solve this problem. So I'm going to start, as I always do, with a formula. And the formula that I know relates all of these values is that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, the Pythagorean theorem. Now I'm going to take the derivative of each. So the derivative of a squared is 2a, but then da dt. And then derivative of b squared is 2b, but then db dt. And the derivative of c squared is 2c, and then dc dt. Now, for the sake of ease, I'm going to divide everything by 2. And now I'm just going to plug in what I know. A is 6. DA DT is 0. B is 8. DB DT is unknown. C is 10. DC DT is negative 400. This is 0, so I don't have to worry about it. So really, I have 8 dB dt is equal to negative 4,000. I divide each side by 8, and I end up with negative 500. So now, again, this is where you would want to pay attention to variables, I'm sorry, units of measure. So what unit of measure would I use? Well. You can either reason through it and say, well, we're talking about a speed, so it's going to be miles per hour, 
or you can also, just as we did before, you can take a look at the 4,000, which would be in miles per hour, times 10, which was miles, so miles squared per hour, and then we're dividing it by eight, which is in miles, so therefore our result is in miles per hour. Now, you might be concerned and say, hold on, what's, why is the speed negative? Why would we have a negative speed? But remember, the negative speed, negative velocity, just means that it's getting closer to something as opposed to further away. So the miles per hour, it's just getting closer. So the speed of the airplane is 500 positive 500 miles per hour. So even though my result was negative, it still makes perfect sense because velocity is just telling us that that distance is getting smaller. Let's take a look at this question. And this one is significantly harder than the last question. And the reason for that is we are dealing with an angle. So let's read the question. We have a television camera at ground level. Here's my camera. And it's filming the lift off of a space shuttle, which is over here. And it's rising vertically according to the position equation, S is equal to 50 T squared. So that's our position. And so we're just gonna call this side of the triangle S because that would be the, the height of the rocket, where T is the number of seconds since liftoff. The camera is 2000 feet from the launch pad find the rate of change of elevation of the camera. So that's why this one's tricky. We've got theta in here, and they're asking us to determine d theta dt, the rate of change of elevation. And the last thing is at the moment of time of 10 seconds after liftoff. So at that moment in time. So why is this one harder? Well, because I can't use the Pythagorean theorem to solve. So let's think about what I can use to solve. I know that I'm going to have an angle, theta. I know this side is 2,000, and I don't know what s is, but I can sure determine it based on this function. So I'm going to write s is equal, oops, s is equal to 50t squared. And I'm going to relate this angle to the side opposite and the side adjacent. So hopefully we know that is the tangent function. So tangent of theta is equal to 50 t squared over 2000. So now let's find the derivative of that. The derivative of tangent theta is secant squared theta d theta dt. And then let's just take that constant out of it. So 1 over 2000. And then 50 t squared is 100 t. And I don't have to worry about dt dt because obviously um, we are differentiating with respect to t. So what can I do now? Well, I don't love the fact that I've got a t in my function. So let's go ahead and simplify that. Let's plug in the 10 because we're dealing with this at 10 seconds. So this is 10, 000, or 100 times 10, which is 1,000. So when I rewrite, I'm going to have secant squared theta d theta dt is equal to, this is 1,000 divided by 2,000 or 1 half. So I'm feeling a little bit better about it because now there's just that one unknown. Well, two, if you count secant squared theta. So let's get d theta dt by itself because that's obviously what we're trying to do. And I have 1 half. Now I'm going to divide each side by secant squared theta. But keep in mind that secant squared theta is really just like one over cosine theta. So I can either say, okay, I'm going to take each side times one divided by secant squared theta, which is just fine. But one divided by secant squared theta is the same as cosine of theta. So now I need to do some work to find cosine of theta. So how do I know cosine of theta? Well, again, we're looking at our triangle and we have that this value is 2000, but cosine says to take that side and the hypotenuse. And I don't know the hypotenuse, but I can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the hypotenuse at 10 seconds. 
So let's do that. If I have the Pythagorean theorem that says s squared plus, we'll just call that b, b squared is equal to c squared, at 10 seconds, s of 10 is 50 times 10 squared, which is 5,000. So this is 5,000 squared plus 2,000 squared is equal to c squared. So 5,000 squared is 25 million plus 2,000 squared is 4 million and that's equal to c squared. So c squared is the square root of 29 million. And don't even try to find what 29 million is. But what I can do now is say, okay, d theta dt is equal to one half and then cosine, remember cosine of theta would be 2000, so that's the adjacent side, over the square root of 29 million, and that's cosine, so I'm going to take that squared. So let me just do this. 2000 squared and then the square root of 29 million squared. But hopefully we understand that the square root and the squared will cancel each other out. So this is really one half and then this is 4 million divided by 29 million, which when I do my reduction turns into 2 over 29 and what is the label? This is radians, we'll just do radians per second. And that is our rate of change of elevation at 10 seconds. Up next, we're going to take a look at relative and absolute extrema.